In this video, I'm going to show how to make an inset map in ArcGIS Pro, kind of like the one you see here that's focusing on the downtown area of this larger city here. And there's a little uh, extent rectangle here that indicates the area covered by the inset, and each inset has its own scale bar. So I'll demonstrate how to create that. And I'm actually going to start over here uh, in this ArcGIS Pro map where I've added some data for OpenStreetMap, thank you OpenStreetMap contributors for contributing to this data, um, I've got this th these basic data sets for the Yakima, Washington area, uh, which I've added and I've done a little bit of uh, symbolizing here for the parks, water buildings, rivers, rails, and roads. And I want to demonstrate a few things that I did uh, in order to prepare the symbols uh, for making this inset. First of all, if you look at my layer list here, you might notice that uh, the highways layer, which contains all of the roads, is repeated. I have two versions of this in here. One uh, which is for viewing when I am zoomed out, and uh, when I zoom in, uh, that's going to change to where I see more roads here. So I've uh, set up some different symbol rules that apply at different scales. Now, how did I do that? Uh, if you highlight a layer here over in the left-hand layer list, and then you click this Feature Layer tab, uh, you will see in the upper left uh, some boxes where you can uh, set some scale ranges. So when I zoom in beyond 1 to 30,000, uh, this layer is going to disappear. And uh, that is why I have added a second version of this, which is currently grayed out because it's not visible at this scale. I'm at 1 to 133,000. Um, this other one that's not visible only appears when I go in beyond uh, 1 to 30,000 and it disappears when I go out beyond 1 to 30,000. So watch carefully right here on the left as I zoom in. You'll see now that this one's uh, visible. Now how do you set this up in practice? There's a couple ways. You could go to the Add Data button and just add this layer twice. Uh, it can point at the same file that's fine. Um, and then you can set the ranges and the symbols on each one the way you like. Um, or if you've got one all set up like I did, I did some pretty uh, extensive uh, setting of the colors on these different categories of OpenStreetMap streets. Uh, and if you want to mostly copy this and just make a duplicate, you can actually right click and uh, copy a layer here and then you could paste it back in as a second layer and then modify from there. That's actually what I did because there's only one difference here in my highway zoomed in uh, that I can remember that I set here which was to turn on the residential streets. And when I do that uh, you see all of these additional streets appearing. Uh, so that's one thing I did to set up the roads and you might notice uh, as I zoomed in um, I have a scale range set on the buildings as well. So those also will appear when I go in beyond 1 to 30,000. Um, now you can do this with labels too, and this is important to point out. Um, I don't have any buildings labeled, uh, but I do have some highway labels. In fact, here, um, if I highlight the, the highways layer that's visible now, zoomed out, and I click the labeling, uh, you'll see that I've turned on labels to label based on the street name. And those will start appearing when I get uh, between 30,000 and uh, 120,000. So right now I'm at 133. If I go in just a little bit here, you should start seeing labels on these major roads. Now I've also done this on my detailed roads layer, and I've got those labels showing up just at 1 to 30,000 where the rest of the layer appears. So if I go in there, um, you will see that some labels will appear on these uh, minor roads. Uh, there's a lot of them, and uh, it takes a second for them to show up, but you can see them here. Um, I've also got a similar type of thing going with the parks, so the park layers appear. Um, the parks are always visible in this, uh, but the labels themselves uh, are only visible when I get in beyond uh, 1 to 30,000. Okay, so that's some of the setup that I did to design this map at multiple scales with the intent to make an inset map. 
Um, and so let's uh, go to that part now where we would actually make this layout. So I'm going to insert a new layout into the project in a landscape style here. And uh, I will need to insert a map frame. Let's do the main map first. So I'm going to use that covering most of the page. And uh, right now I'm zoomed to this scale, but I'm immediately going to change that. I want this to show the whole city. So if you want to change the scale, um, careful here. You can't use the scroll wheel because that will just zoom in and out your page. So if you want to change the actual scale that's shown here, uh, you need to. You could right-click the frame and choose activate. And now it's uh, I'm able to zoom and pan this map. And I'm going to put it right about here where I've got the labels of the major roads showing. And I've got most of the city, which covers this part of the map. Um, I could do other things here. Maybe I want to delete this frame. Whoops. <laughs> you know, um, if you don't close the activation, you can accidentally select stuff like I just did. So uh, I'm going to close that. And what I wanted to do is select this frame so I can change its properties. And what I'll do here is uh, I'm just going to make that frame invisible because uh, I don't really want a border on this one. I just want it to take most of the map page like that. That's cool. Uh, maybe I want to put in a, a title and stuff. I can do that later. But let me just show you how I would set up this additional inset map because that's the, the main point of this video. So I can insert here another map frame. And I'm just going to draw it right on top of the other one and cover it up a little bit. Here in this part of town, it's a little more rural that uh, may be less interesting to users or readers of this map. Now, when I do that, it's gonna, again going to default uh, to the, the start extent here, and I can change that. Um, it's a little confusing to see here because there's some transparency in the background. So the first thing I'm going to do is change this background and just be uh, regular white instead of transparent and that will make it look a little less muddled there we go um, now uh, I'm going to activate this map frame so I can zoom it to the downtown area okay now I'm on the part of downtown that I really want to focus in on so I'm gonna close the activation here and now you can see I've got this other frame sitting here now if I want to uh, put a, an extent rectangle here to show where that inset covers um, I could select this frame uh, the main one and then I ins add or insert an extent indicator attached to uh, the second map frame which is actually called map frame one here I have map frame and map frame one. It is a little confusing, but um, you'll see it immediately appear right here. Uh, I could throw a little bit of text in here um, just as a guide to the map reader. So guiding them to see the inset map uh, over here. And I can also use this uh, text insertion to put a few more things into my map, maybe a title like this. I can certainly change uh, the text symbols here if I want to make this a little bit smaller. I have control over those things. Okay. Sometimes it's also good to put a little label here in your inset map. Let's do that. I'll just put one indicating that this covers the downtown area. And maybe I want this to be a little bit smaller. Uh, there are perhaps other sequences of buttons I can use to do this, but this should work fine. I could put a little halo around this text if I want to get fancier. I could center it, but uh, it's good enough for now for the purposes of our demo. Now, um, one thing that to be very careful of when you are using two different scales like this is when you put a scale bar in, you need to put the scale bar on the correct map. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's going to give you erroneous distances. So uh, what you can do is highlight a map frame and then insert the scale bar onto the highlighted frame. So um, I'm going to highlight this main map frame and insert a scale bar. Let's just choose. Uh, like this basic single division scale bar here. Drag it out. 
And that's a distance of about two miles, which is correct for this main map. Now, if I want a scale bar on this one, um, I need to highlight that frame and insert the scale bar. And ArcGIS will detect which frame it's attached to. So uh, this is saying that's 0.45 miles. And we could adjust the length here to um, be a more rounded number. Uh, but you get the idea uh, that these scale bars are connected to each of the individual map frames. So this little demonstration uh, just shows you how to make an inset map and design it at a different scale and then connect it to the main map using an extent rectangle and then attach scale bars of appropriate uh, distances to each.